Today we will be looking at the 1953 Iranian coup d'etat. Before starting, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. A democratically elected president of Iran was overthrown in 1953 with assistance from the United States and Europe, which resulted in the re-election of a dictator. Why would these democratic nations back a coup that would benefit what they assert to be against? Despite there being many contributing factors, oil was the main cause. In other words, the U.S. supported a coup against Iran's democratically elected leader and assisted in the restoration of an autocratic leader because the former was going to undermine the European oil economy. In order to ensure that the British company, Anglo-Iranian oil company, AIOSI, was paying Iran the agreed-upon royalties and to restrict its access to Iranian oil reserves, Mossadegh had sought to audit AIOC's records. The parliament decided to nationalize Iran's oil industry and expel foreign corporate representatives after the AIOC refused to cooperate with the Iranian government. Following this vote, Britain organized a global boycott of Iranian oil to put economic pressure on Iran. British Prime Minister Clement Attlee, in office until 1951, decided to tighten the economic boycott while using Iranian agents to overthrow Mossadegh's government. Initially, Britain mobilized its military to seize control of the British-built Abadan oil refinery, then the largest in the world. Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and the Eisenhower administration decided to overthrow Iran's government in early 1953 because they believed Mossadegh to be unreliable and were concerned about a communist takeover in Iran. The Truman administration had opposed the coup because they were worried about the precedent that involvement of the Central Intelligence Agency would set. Even though the U.S. government had considered taking unilateral action without U.K. support, in 1952 to support the Mossadegh government. The conclusions of British intelligence officials and the UK government's requests were crucial in initiating and planning the coup. After the 1953 coup, a government led by General Fazlallah Zahidi was established, which gave Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the final Shah of Iran, which is Farsi for King, more authority to rule as a monarch. He heavily relied on American support to maintain his position of power. The CIA hired some of the most feared mobsters in Tehran to stage pro-Shah riots on August 19. According to declassified documents and records from the agency, other men who had been paid by the CIA arrived in Tehran in buses and trucks and took control of the streets. There were 200 to 300 fatalities as a result of the fighting. Mossadegh was detained, put on trial, and found guilty of treason by the military court of the Shah. He was given a three-year prison term on December 21. 1st, 1953, after which he was put under house arrest for the rest of his life. Other Mossadegh supporters were jailed, and some of them were executed. The Shah maintained his monarchical position after the coup for the following 26 years until he was deposed in the Iranian Revolution of 1979. By making a large number of previously classified government documents public in August 2013, the U.S. government formally acknowledged its involvement in the coup. These documents demonstrate that the U.S. was in charge of both the coup's planning and execution, including the bribery of Iranian politicians, high-ranking security and army officials, and coup propaganda. The coup was carried out under CIA direction and as an act of U.S. foreign policy, conceived and approved at the highest levels of government, according to the CIA. That's a wrap for today's video. What are your thoughts on Iran's 1953 coup? Let us know in the comments section below. And make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more future updates.